So Neo has a project called the Hieroglyph Project. Uh, is it intended to inspire us with some of these optimistic visions of getting things done, or is it just meant to be a, a gag? It's, uh, it's kind of an experiment. It's kind of... Uh, well, explain what it is. It's, the, it's almost it is. something I'm doing on a dare. Um, uh, 14 months ago, I was at a, a conference called Future Tense in DC, um, where the, the theme of the conference, is, as far as I can make out, was, oh my god, people are out there inventing new things. What are we going to do to, to regulate them? <laughs> which, um, which, on one level, I, I understand. I mean, all of my knee-jerk reflexes are those of a, a child of the environmental movement. But on the other hand, I, um, this was not long after Deepwater Horizon. And I had kind of been thinking, um, gee, maybe we need something new. Um, and so I decided to be the, uh, the fly in the ointment. And instead, I, uh, I, I talked about how maybe we should be focusing on, on doing some new innovations, and not on the level of writing apps, uh, but on the level of you know, restructuring our um, energy system so we don't have to go fight wars in places like Iraq. Uh, and so, um, and I use rockets as my example because it's something I have been obsessed with since I was a kid. Um, but it's not just about rockets and space flight, even if you don't care about space flight and you don't want us to, to ever go into space again, you can kind of see that uh, the same, uh, maybe the same syndrome that's befallen the space program has befallen us in other areas as well, uh, in energy um, or what have you. So, um, so that led to a conversation about what, if any, utility science fiction had, which is kind of what your question's about. And um, there's sort of two theories. One is just the inspirational theory that uh, young people read SF and decide to become scientists and engineers. And I think that's true. But the other theory was, uh, are you going to pull the audience? Yeah, I was. OK. How many of the people in the audience who are, how many in the audience are technologists broadly or scientists? So basically, <laughs> basically with MIT, everyone. And how many of you became so? because you were initially inspired by, sci by science fiction? Third? Yeah, about yeah. a third. Yeah. So. A few more kind of few more. <laughs> gave up Sheepishly. After. They yeah. had to kind of think about it. Yeah, bandwagon mm -hmm. jumpers. So the, the utility of science fiction. <laughs> um, yeah, the, but, but there's a, a less obvious utility, I think, which is that science fiction can sort of provide a uh, a coherent picture of, of alternate reality in which some innovation happened. And it's not just the technical innovation itself, but it's the social context and the economic context that causes that innovation to make sense. And um, so I think, it, I mean, I, I'm just kind of repeating what I've heard from, uh, from technologists who are science fiction fans. So there may be an echo chamber effect going on here, and I may just be fooling myself, but what I hear is that it can be sort of like the, um, the invisible magnetic field that gets the iron filings to line up. That um, in big engineering organizations, uh, you've got all these people working on small pieces of a bigger problem, and there's an enormous amount of communication that has to take place to keep them all working in in a coordinated fashion, and that co communication is kind of tedious and expensive. Um, but if everybody's got the same picture in their heads, uh, maybe you don't have to communicate as much. So, um, so that was kind of the theoretical discussion. And then Michael Crow, who's the president of Arizona State, who was on the same panel, said, uh, accused us, uh, the science fiction writers, as a class of slacking off, his words. Um, <laughs> You're the ones who've been slacking off. The engineers and scientists, we've got the tools. We've got the enthusiasm. We've got the brains. We're good to go. And all you guys are doing is turning out this kind of um, depressing, uh, dystopian picture of the future. So to kind of call his bluff and, and uh, perform this experiment, uh, we started this project, which is still taking shape. Um, but um, the idea is to round up some science fiction writers, some of whom might be the usual suspects, some of whom maybe not so usual, and get them to write 
new science fiction stories in a more techno-optimistic vein, um, and, um, and preferably depict uh, changes, new ideas, new technologies, such that um, someone graduating from MIT could read the story and say, OK, this doesn't exist today, but if I start working on it now, by the time I retire, maybe it will exist. So that's the thing that we're trying to, to get going.